Welcome back to the channel. For those of you new, I'm Jeanette from Body Quest Sewing and Crafts, and this is actually day eight of the Gift Miss series of the 12 Days of Christmas for the channel. Now, in this video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making holiday coasters. Okay, so I thought this was a pretty neat idea. Now, these coasters that you see here, they are um, the size of this, I kind of cut them down. This is what I actually used, which is, this. I believe this is a five by five ruler, okay? And I use this so that I can cut the squares out of my fabric, okay? You can actually use any type of shape that you want. You can do a circle, you can do a heart, um, a star, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, now, I also wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the fabric that I am using, okay? As you guys know, um, for those of you guys that have followed me, I like to um, embroider quilted baby blankets. And sometimes I make an error. And when I make the error, I don't throw away the blanket because the blanket is really, really big. And, you know, it has this beautiful quilted fabric. And inside of it, as you can see, this is sandwiched with some batting. So this is like a really nice piece of fabric. And I just don't, you know, want to toss it away. So one of the things I decided to do was to reuse it. And I thought that making coasters for the holidays would be really cool. Now, what I did was I just took the fabric and I just cut them down to size. I used this ruler. And then what I did was I used my serger so that I can serge the ends. And this is pretty neat because if you have like a holiday party or something like that, you can make a whole bunch of these and you can place them down so that way there are plenty of coasters so people don't put their drinks on furniture and actually, you know, accidentally ruin the furniture. They also make really good gifts because you can do so much with these, okay? Like for instance, here I have personalized them. Now I am going to redo this one because as you can see, I messed up with my serger. It kind of bunched up in here. And stuff. So I have to redo this one and this is what I'm going to do in the video is actually make one of these. Hopefully this will look a lot better like this one. Okay. And I like this because you don't have to personalize it or you can personalize it. You don't have to put um, a, an initial. You can actually put a Christmas design here if you want to. There's just so many things that you can do. Now, if you don't have this type of fabric, it's not a big deal. What you can do is just take two pieces of fabric with some batting and you can make this. Okay, so I made this last night. Um, I really am not too crazy about the way that it's sewn. Um, as you can see, I did great here, here, and here. But then on this edge, I kind of like, kind of, you know, sewn off. So my sewing skills really aren't like to date, but they're pretty cool. You know, it's, it's okay. Now, one of the things that I do want to um, show you is that if you turn this over, I have like another type of fabric here. Hold on, because Mello is getting on my nerves. Hold on. Okay, so as you can see, I already opened the door for Mello because he was upset because he wanted to go look out the window. So <laughs> that's a Mello thing. But let's get back to the uh, coaster. Okay, so when it comes to this type of fabric that's already quilted, if you are not making any type of design on it, you can just easily just cut this up, search the edges, you know, and you're good to go. Very easy to do, okay? And you can search it using different colors threads as I did here. However, one of the things that I want to show you is when you do the embroidery, sometimes you'll see the back of the embroidery when you flip it. And that can kind of be not really attractive. Some, sometimes it bothers a lot of people. One of the things that I did was I had this old Christmas fabric that I purchased from Joann's about, I think, two years ago. And I never got around to using it. So I decided I'm going to take this and I am going to not just cut out a piece of this for the coaster. I'm also going to cut a piece of this as well. And then what I'm planning on doing is like what I did here. But unfortunately, 
my serger didn't um, agree with me. It's going to be the back of the coaster so that way you don't see the back of the embroidery. So I thought this would be a really great idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I did this one and hopefully the surging part will come out okay. If also one of the things that I'll do is I'll also give you the instructions on how to do this one as well in case you don't have this type of fabric. It's really almost the same concept, but I'll give you the instructions. I'll walk you through it so that way you'll know exactly how to do this. And like I said, it doesn't have to be a square. It could be a triangle. It could be a circle. It could be whatever you want it to be, okay? So let's um, get down to how I'm actually going to do this one, all right? So, of course, I'm going to need to cut my fabric. I have it at this size right now. And I'm going to need the ruler. And I know that this is not exactly, um, it's the, the fabric is actually smaller than this ruler, but that's okay. I'm just going to just use whatever I can get out of here because I don't want any waste. Um, this, this set is for me, so it's all right. As long as it's enough where a person can like, you know, take a cup and put it on here, I'm okay with it, okay? So now that I have this cut, um, one of the things that I say also is print out the template of whatever design you're going to use because what you want to do is you want to tape it right where you want that design to be on the actual item. So you want that. So that way when you go to win border, it's fine. Now I am going to need the back of this. So what I'm going to do here is what I'll do is I will use one of these instead of the other fabric. I'm just gonna take this. This can be the back of my um, of my coaster. Okay, so I'm just gonna have a plain red in the back of the coaster and I'm gonna serge it with red thread, okay? And then this, the, the W, I want it to be red also so it can match, all right? So let me show you how I'm actually going to hoop this, all right? Now, there's going to be several ways you can hoop this. I'm going to show you for the single and the multi. I'm actually going to do this on a multi needle, but let me show you how to hoop this on a single needle, okay? Because my initial isn't that big, I can use either one of these hoops, okay? If you want to use a 4x4 four four hoop, you can, because as you can see, the design fits really nicely in here, okay? It doesn't bump up to the edge or anything like that. Or you can use your 5x7 if you don't have a 4x4. Four four. It's not a problem, okay? So one of the things that you're going to do is you're actually going to take your uh, tearaway stabilizer. You're going to hoop the stabilizer, all right? And then what you're going to do is when you go to spray it with temporary heat adhesive, I mean temporary um, adhesive, okay? I recommend using one of these. This you can get from the dollar store, and what it is, it covers the um, the wheel of the automobile. I like to put this over here because one of the things that this does is it prevents your hoop from getting dirty and sticky, okay? Um, you know, when you spray this, what happens is if you don't use something like this, this can get dirty. It's not really going to damage it, but the thing is, is it can it can get really dirty and difficult to clean over time. So you just, you know, I would just do that if you can. If you, if you don't, then that's not a problem. There's two ways you can do this, okay? If you don't have this and you don't want to dirty your hoop, you can do it the way that I do it with the multi-needle machine when I go to hoop this, is just take this back, okay? And then just spray the back. You want to gently spray it. You don't want to like soak it up or anything like that. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to place it on the hoop, okay? And then you smooth it out. You may want to put some pins to secure it, okay, to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And then you go ahead and you embroider it, okay? You don't embroider it with the backing on it. You just want to embroider the piece of the fabric that you are going to do the, the, the embroidery on, okay? So let's go to the... um multi-side and I'm going to show you exactly how I actually do this okay so I'm using an 
eight by eight tearaway stabilizer. Okay. And as I said, I'm going to do this side. I'm just going to lightly spray my uh, temporary adhesive. But let me uh, put my hoop on here first. There you go. And there you go. oh, I tore it by accident, but it's good. And I'm going to rehoop this because look, there's um, it's not exactly. I didn't do it right. Okay, so let me just do this again, and I'm leaving these arrows in here because that way you guys can learn <laughs> from from my mistakes. Okay, so I'm just gonna rehoop this again. Because I just accidentally tore this part, but that's okay. Put that here, put that here, here, and that here, of course, but ah, that's okay. Let me see if it will It'll take it nice and there you go. Now, perfect. See, I don't feel any type of curving or anything like that. So this is perfect, all right? So now I'm going to take this part right here of my, um, you know, the fabric and shake. And then what I'm gonna do, lightly, and now I'm just putting it on here. There you go. That's how I do it. You guys saw that? Yep, that's how I do it, okay? Now, I have, my template on here, okay, so that I can make sure that the W is gonna be exactly where I want it centered, okay? So now I have this loaded on my machine, so I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm going to stitch this out. Okay, I am here at my machine. I don't know if you know, but I, I'm on my six needle machine and I have my laser point and it is right in the, the, the cross the center point of my template. So now that I know I got this positioned exactly where I want it, I'm going to remove my template, make sure that it's nice and down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm going to start stitching it. Now, before I start stitching it, you always want to trace because you wanna make sure that your needle is not gonna hit the side of your hoop. Make sure you get into the habit of doing that that way, you know, you never mess up your machine, okay? Because that is the worst thing that you want. You'll break your needle and you can break your machine as well. So always trace. Make that a good habit. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to embroider.
Okay, that was a pretty quick stitch. It was um, just six minutes to do this initial. So let's go over now to the cutting table and let's take a look at this and talk about the next steps. All right, so here we are at the cutting table. And let me give you a close-up so that you can see what it looks like. It came out really nice. I really like this font. I'll make sure to post the link in the video description in case you guys are interested. And let's take this out of the hoop and let's assemble it for the um, sewing, the serger part, okay? So I'm going to put aside my hoop, okay? Because I no longer need it. Put it on the side here and then now let me take this off, take this tear away stabilizer off of it. And you, you don't have to take it all off, you can just take off as much as you possibly can. I mean, it's not a big deal because, and I'm going to leave it. You know why? Because this fabric is going to cover the back, okay? That's why we have this, and I, you know, because what it is is you can leave it like this if you want to, okay? And then just serge the edges. All right, because you see that they do fray. But the thing is, when they turn it over, they're going to see the back of the embroidery. So you won't want that. So what I usually do is I will take a piece of fabric and I will put it right on here. And what I usually do, you see, because it has it just like this. And I'm going to serge it. And when I serge it on my serger, it's going to have these types of threads. Okay? And let me tell you, in case you don't have a serger, if you don't have a serger and you want to do this kind of a look, you can do the zigzag on your sewing machine and then just make sure that you zigzag the edges, okay? That's what you can do if you want to. Um, but I'm going to serge it because it is quick to do it that way, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin this. And as you can see, my fabric is a little bit bigger. It's not a big deal because when you serge, you also sometimes cut a little bit of the fabric so it'll all come out nicely. So I just I just want to put it together in place. And then after I finish pinning this, we're going to go over to serger and I'm going to serge it up. And then we can talk about how to do it if you don't have a serger. And let's say if you want to do it the other way where you want to use the batting, I'll give you the instructions on how to do that as well, okay? That way everybody can do it and stuff. And like I said, it doesn't have to be initial, doesn't have to be a square shape, it can be any kind of shape you want. So I'm gonna head over to the serger now so that we can serge this. Okay guys, I'm gonna be using my brother um, 1034DX to serge this and um, and I'm also going to be using fray check. Now, the reason why I use fray check is so that the edges doesn't unravel. And I'll show you when we're done serging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, lift my foot up. Start here. I'm going to take the tail, you know, of this. And I'm just going to pull as I am serging because I'm just serging straight all the way down. Okay, so I'm going to take this out. And I'm going to pull a little bit. Looks like it's gonna be good. Okay. And I just go straight, okay? Then I cut my tail. And pull this straight down the back. Okay, see how nice it's already looking? Okay. And then I'm just going to start from this side and I'm gonna go all the way down. See how nicely it's coming out? I'm going to cut this tail too. Okay. And this is pretty quick. This is not, you know, a long project. So it's a nice way to have like holiday posters around your house. And it doesn't even have to be holidays. You can use it for anything. Now see how it has like a little bit of the 
thing here that's gonna come out and I always I always cut as I go um yeah how I like to sew and then because of that I don't have to worry about because serger's cut so I'm just gonna go straight across See, and then in the back, I have my fabric, and it doesn't show the back of the embroidery. So it looks really, really nice, okay? And like I said, you can do different colors and stuff like that. It looks really good. So that this does not um, unravel, okay? You can use spray check, and you just put like a little dap on each of the corners, let it dry, and then you're good to go. But for those of you guys that don't have a serger and don't have these quilted fabrics, let's talk about how you would actually do this on your single needle machine and also, um, you know, without having quilted fabric, okay? Turning it inside out. So let's go over to the um, cutting table and I'm gonna tell, tell you how to do the rest, okay? Okay guys, let's talk about if you don't have this type of fabric, how would you do it if you just had ordinary fabric and you went and got batting? So this is really how I did this one. This is what I wanna show you how to do. That way, everybody can do this. There's no reason why, you know, somebody should feel left out and stuff like that. So anyway, these are five by five squares, okay? So, and this is 100% batting, okay? So what you do is you're not gonna use your batting yet. What you're gonna do is how I showed you guys earlier, you're gonna take one of these. I would stabilize it because you don't want it to, um, you know, the pucker or anything, because if you noticed in mine, I had a little bit of puckering and it's because I didn't stabilize it. So depending how light your fabric is, and this is pretty light, I would starch it and stabilize it to make sure that it is nice and taut, okay? This is very rough fabric, so you're it's not going to um, pucker, but you want to make sure that whatever design you're doing on here when you're embroidering, that it doesn't buck. Uh, pucker or anything like that so this is the plain one so we're going to make believe that this is embroidered okay once you have this embroidered what's going to happen is you want to create like a little sandwich because you're going to turn this inside out so you have your item that's in border and then you have this that's going to be the back so you want your embroidered item to face the pretty side of this fabric okay so you're gonna go like this okay and then and then to make sure that you understand I where did I put my template because I want to see if I can put the template on here so that you guys can see there it is where it is okay so I'm gonna paste to put this on here so that you guys can get that visual okay because the visuals are always good let's make believe this is the embroidery you're gonna take the embroidery and you're going to face it towards here. Then you're gonna take your batting and you're gonna put it in here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pin it, okay? Pin it all the way around, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to leave an opening. Okay, when you start sewing. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a pen and then you're going to mark about two inches, you know, just like from here to here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. So then what's gonna happen is you're gonna back stitch and you're gonna stitch all the way around and then you're gonna back stitch there and stop. Then what's gonna happen is you're gonna turn this inside out, okay? You're going to take this back and you're gonna take the part that you embroidered. And what I usually do is I go all the way in and I grab it by the corner and then I just turn it inside out. When you turn it inside out, then it's going to look kind of similar to this. What you wanna do is you wanna poke out the corners, be careful doing that. You're gonna have an opening, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna iron it. When you iron it, 
okay? Then what you want to do is you just want to top stitch. Here, I I top stitched it in white. You can, I, I would actually tie, try to get one, a color that, that matches, okay? But you're going to top stitch it. You don't have to do a quarter of an inch. I did a quarter of an inch. Try to go as, as close to the edge as you possibly can, okay? Because this was where the opening was on mine, but... As you can see, it's closed because I, I did stitch it down. But you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew. You can do one of two ways, okay? You could just sew that opening shut and leave it be. But if you want, you can also sew it shut and then just go all the way around. And then you just give it a good iron and, and you're good to go. And there you have your coaster, okay? But like I said, these are lots of fun to make. They're quick. They're easy. And it's a great way to decorate for the holidays, okay? So that way people have somewhere to put your drinks down and they're not like messing up your furniture or anything like that. So guys, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I'm all about sewing and embroidery and other crafts. And I also host Embroidery Happy Hour where I like to share um, you know, different things regarding embroidery, running an embroidery business and all that stuff, all that good stuff. I like always enjoy my Fridays at eight o'clock Eastern standard time. So yeah, so just subscribe and hit that notification button and you'll know whenever I push out another video. So guys, I hope you really are enjoying these series. It's, you know, it's a lot of fun making a lot of these things. So enjoy your holidays, be safe, and I will see you at the next video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.